Who are you? A question that requires little thought for some and a terrifying flurry of places and identities for others. For myself, I must categorize my thoughts before proceeding to answer the question. Categories such as school, work, family, friends, places, skin color, sexuality, gender, they all come to mind, but which do you pick? When you first meet someone new, this question is never explicitly stated, is it? But rather, it comes in the form of smaller questions, supposedly shortening the answers. For example, we have questions such as, where are you from? What do you do for work? Or where do you go to school? For our exercise today, let's take one of these questions. Where are you from? For some of us, this answer is easy and can be answered in less than five words. For example, je viens de Suisse, soy de Mexico, or I'm from the United States. But for myself and many others here today, the answer goes something a bit more like this. I was raised in Chicago and my family is from India. Well, I guess that makes me American Indian. Well, let's, let's say I'm Indian American, just to give my culture precedent. But Indian American on the US census form is actually Native American, so I guess that's not quite right either. What a silly little problem to have, right? Well, it became much less silly when I, the daughter of immigrants, came home from school without eating her Indian school lunch because her peers had deemed it as too exotic, too weird, or simply too smelly. Or when I go to visit my um, homeland and people there treat me as though I'm a foreigner, as if this isn't my homeland, as if I don't actually belong there. Thus, I find myself in a liminal space, too foreign for one, too foreign for the other, and never enough for both. I embody a third identity, one that Ruth Hillesim coins as the third culture kid. Third culture kids are children who grew up in different cultures than that of their parents. Like many of us here in International Geneva, we are children of expats, children of immigrants, children of diplomats, children of army generals who have had to move from place to place to place. And what this provides us is a really formative experience within our childhood, but one that also rips us from our home cultures and forces us to assimilate and sometimes even forcing our own parents to assimilate just in hopes of fitting in. But amongst these struggles, there is strength. There is resilience within our shared experiences. Today, I'm wearing what I feel the most myself in, an outward expression of my true identity. It's a seamless blend of Western and Indian fabrics and jewelry, borrowed from my best friends, my mother, and my aunties, and everyone in between. And I am not ashamed to wear that in front of you all today. But this was not always the case. When I was growing up, I was completely embarrassed to even step outside of the house in traditional Indian attire or wear something as small as a putte on my forehead. But today, I am outwardly expressing my identity in a way that shows the world that I am proud of the culture and the heritage that has shaped me to who I am today. As third culture kids, we are the connectors, the bridge builders, and the global citizens of tomorrow. And we possess a unique perspective, one that encompasses multiple perspectives and allows us to defy the categorization and celebrate the beauty of diversity. And one thing that we really understand best is we possess these multiple perspectives to be brought forward at a decision-making table. Our critical thinking skills rely heavily on these multiple perspectives. And what we also understand is that everyone at this table also has a different perspective. And thus, we cannot just have these solutions in a way that only pertains to one perspective because we always know that there's more than one way to a solution. And what we also understand is that home is not a place, but it's a feeling. It's a sense of belonging that eludes the, trans that eludes the borders and cultural divides of our daily lives. And what we don't understand when we're growing up is that being part of a diaspora is one of the most enriching and formative experiences a child can get. For example, 
I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, a melting pot to say the least, and I found myself making friends with anyone and everyone, regardless of where they were from. And what I found very interesting was that most of my best friends, still to this day, are third culture kids themselves. And this is because when we feel these senses of isolation or grapple with these issues that we can't root ourselves in one place, we have each other to rely on. And when we speak multiple languages and celebrate these diverse holidays with each other, we become chameleons of culture, seamlessly blending into our environments while wholeheartedly retaining the essence of who we are. So, who are we? We are connectors, we are adventurers, travelers, and storytellers. We are third culture kids, proud, resilient, and unapologetically ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>